Hayden Christensen is coming to celebration. Do you think he'll read my fan fiction? No, because he'll be busy reading mine first. <laughs> This week on the Star Wars Show, Andy sits down with Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Chris Conley, Doug Chang takes us inside Vader's castle, and much, much more. Now, from the Lucasfilm headquarters, it's the Star Wars Show. Hey, I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Andy Gutierrez. Welcome to the Star Wars Show, a show where genuine Star Wars excitement is often misconstrued as cringe in the comments. Sorry if we like Star Wars, internet. Yeah, he gets excited. And I'm the girl. It's our thing. Deal with it. Okay, that actually was a little cringe. Let's go to the news. <laughs> On Friday, Lucasfilm officially announced that Hayden Christensen will be returning to Star Wars Celebration for Yay. the first time in 15 years next week in Orlando. The sand-hating Sith Lord will be joining Kathleen Kennedy, Dave Filoni, Mark Hamill, Ian McDermott, Anthony Daniels, Peter Mayhew, and Billy Dee Williams on stage for the 40 Years of Star Wars panel. The panel begins at 11 a.m. on Thursday, April 13th, and promises plenty of surprises that will set the tone for the entire weekend at this year's celebration. All we can say is, if you're attending, you will want to be in the room for this one. If you're watching the stream, watch it live. Do not miss this panel. Cannot stress that enough. Watch it. You think they got it? Watch the panel. I think that was it. Okay, cool, good. StarWars.com has been nominated for three Webbies. First for Best Website, Movie and Film for StarWars.com, Best Entertainment Mobile Site and App for the Star Wars app, and Best Events and Live Webcasts for the Rogue One Red Carpet Livestream. And you can vote for us every day. Just go to StarWars.com for more information. Lego The Freemaker Adventures will be returning for a second season. The four-time Emmy-nominated comedy continues where last season left off, with the Freemaker family adjusting to their new lives and roles within the Rebel fleet. Plus, on May the 4th, five new shorts will premiere on Disney XD that bridge the gap between the end of season one and the start of season two. Finally, if you updated your Star Wars app, you may have noticed that K2SO has been added to the AR section. Ooh, that sounds amazing, Anthony. But how do I do it? Well, Andy, after scanning either the app poster, Force Awakens poster, Rogue One poster, or Rogue One Blu-ray cover, the cantankerous droid will appear through the magic of augmented reality. And for more breaking Star Wars news from around the galaxy, check out StarWars.com or the Star Wars app. <laughs> When we started to come up with the idea of where Krennic would meet Vader, we really started to play around with, okay, mood and look. Ralph did some early exploration of what Vader's castle was. And so when this scene came up, we thought, well, let's resurrect that idea. In doing the research, I mean, Ralph did a lot of drawings for Vader's castle, but he really didn't do any interiors. But what I found particularly interesting was that Ralph had designed this upside down red triangle as the symbol of Vader. And so I really wanted to evoke that in the set itself. And so as we were designing the room, we tried to very subtly play that. And if you look at the entrance, when Krennic first arrives, the exterior of that meeting room is a upside down cone. You know, for fans, if they are familiar with Vader's symbol, they'll see that connection in there. And then likewise, when you see the actual doorway, it's in the shape of Vader's mouth. And so the whole idea for me was to play off the subtleties of when you're coming to visit Vader, you're literally going inside him. It was interesting when we were talking about how do we reveal Vader, because he's so iconic. You can identify him by just the silhouette itself. And so Gareth thought, well, why don't we introduce him by seeing a shadow first, because that would be even more threatening. And what was great was that we were paying homage to Indiana Jones. When Marion was in the bar, you saw the villains come in and you see their shadows creep up. And we thought, well, wouldn't it be powerful to do a similar thing? And it works really well because even in silhouette form, you immediately know it's him. And if you notice that there's a circular platform where Vader and Krennic meet. And what I like about that idea is that if you think about it, for Vader to have a confrontation room in this big open space where you can easily fall off the edge is very intimidating. So whoever's coming to visit him is always under this veil threat that Vader could force them off the edge. Part of the history that we do in designing Vader's castle is where are all the rooms? And so we decided that the castle itself was gonna be sent around the back of the tank. That was the most important thing. But we also knew that there was gonna be a meditation chamber. He had it to have like a little training area, maybe down below in the catacombs as a more ancient area. The map of Vader's castle is all thought out and I'm hoping that we'll have an opportunity to actually explore it. The captain says you are a friend. I will not kill you. Hey guys, welcome to the show this week. Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver, Star Wars filmmaker, and super fan Chris Conley. Your history with Star Wars has been going on for quite a while now. I mean, when I was working the Star Wars Twitter account, we talked every once in a while because you were working on your film, Retribution. What was it like after it came out, after you finished the film and you released it? You know, sometimes athletes get pigeonholed into stereotypes of what they are mm -hmm. and uh, what their interests are and what they can do. 
And I think the first response I got from a lot of people was like, oh, all football players aren't dumb. I think Retribution really opened the door for me to fall in love with filmmaking. So the prequels mm -hmm. came out and we were like right at that perfect age to like go to the theater and get- Impressionable, so right? impressionable. And you're just like, ah, give me everything. And you're mm -hmm. a pretty hardcore fan. Mm -hmm. Where did you go next? My mom was big on making us read. She's a teacher. So if I had a choice of what book, it was a Star Wars related book. Mm -hmm. And then immediately, once I was old enough and allowed to play video games, all the games from N64 to the old computer games, you know, Jedi Knight Academy, Jedi Knight Outcast. So I was told you're a huge Old Republic fan. You still yes. play from time to time. Yes, you know, when the game first came out, I was on there an obscene amount of time. I played competitively online. I even had a laptop, a gaming laptop in my wow. dorm room in the table that I had set aside and it was just for that game. Nerd. Uh, yes, nerds come in all shapes and sizes. I think it would be more evident if a lot of the cons actually weren't during our football season because I'd be at every single one. <laughs> you know, I've met tons of guys who connect with all this stuff and I think it's something that's bigger than stereotype. I think it's a great community of people, whether it's in the video games or the books or even the movies. Yeah. The prop building communities that come together, there's so many facets of the story of Star Wars in the world yeah. that people can connect to in their own way. And I think that the talented people in this building who are working on all these projects, Star Wars is in great hands right mm -hmm. now. And I'm confident in that. And it makes me happy as a fan to know that you guys work around something that's so dear to so many of us. Oh, that's awesome. I wish you all the best luck in Thank the world. You. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming to the launch of the all new Trivia Night. Still a night of brain busting trivia and it's all for a great cause. The trivia questions have all been written by Pablo and I am so sorry for you all. Pablo's merciless. There is only one Star Wars question tonight and it is worth a whopping one point. So uh, let's, let's do this. Rock and roll. And may the force be with you. What is the most popular sandwich in America? How many hearts does an octopus have? What film director coined the term McGuffin? And now, which Star Wars character can you add a four to and create potassium sulfate? Ladies and gentlemen, give yourselves a round of applause because you've just completed Trivia Night in first place. Congratulations, Team Heller High Sport. Let's not forget what is most important. That's right, what's most important tonight is all the money that we collectively helped raise for some incredible local charities is $143,661.50. That's incredible, everybody. Thank you so much. Last week, in lieu of joining the cavalcade of Internet April Fool's jokes, or as we like to call it here at the Star Wars show, Fake News Day, we asked you to name your favorite Star Wars goofs. Lots of you, like Horta Del Rosario and Elsa Berglund, called out the improvised K2 slap across the face as their favorite funny moment, while Empress Baca and Robert Bissett sent in their votes for Kylo's temper tantrum. But the clear winner was the stormtrooper who hit his head on the doorway. So here's to you, nameless extra who couldn't see out of his helmet. Your mistake made Star Wars what it is today. And as always, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, like us on Facebook, and download the Star Wars app. Goodness. Yeah. Anywhere else you want to send them? Everywhere. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. We want to hit them all, right? Review us on Yelp. <laughs> Is Elo still a thing? Be sure to check us out on MySpace. Friendster, probably. Have I missed anything? No, I think you got it. Got it all? All right.